Next, let us build withdraw REST API. So let us go to Linkage Idea and let's create the withdraw REST API. So let us first change the service layer and then we'll change the controller layer. So go to account service interface and here let's define the method. Let's give return type as account DTO. Let's give method name is withdraw and let's pass parameter as long ID. Let's also pass the second parameter that is amount. Perfect. Now we have defined withdraw method in a account service interface. Next, let us provide the implementation for this method in a account service sample class. So let us jump into account service sample class. Just mouse over on this class, click on implement methods, select the method that you want to implement, click on OK. Perfect. Next, let us implement this withdraw method over here. So here, first we'll check whether the account with a given ID is exist in a database or not. If the account with a given ID is not exist in database, then we'll throw the exceptions like account does not exist. Okay. So that piece of code we have already written in a you know existing methods. So we can copy that piece of code from here. So go to deposit method and copy this piece of code. Okay. And again go to withdraw method and here simply paste it. Okay. Perfect. Next, let us add one more condition like if the withdraw amount is you know greater than the balance, then we'll throw the exception like insufficient amount. Okay. So here let's add the if condition and then account dot get balance. So if the account balance is less than the withdraw amount, then we'll throw the runtime exception. So here throw new runtime exception and let us pass the message in sufficient amount perfect next here let us write the logic double total equal to so here just call account dot get balance minus amount so in this case we are withdrawing the amount from the balance that's why we are using a subtraction okay next let's call account dot set balance and then pass total okay perfect next let us call account repository and then call save method and then pass this account object. Next, this save method return the account, you know, saved account object. So let us introduce a local variable of type account. Let's call it as saved account. Perfect. Next, if you go, if you can look at the withdraw method over here, it returns the account DTO. So let us convert account entity into account DTO. So here, let us remove this null, and let's call you know uh, account mapper and then it has map to account DTO and then pass saved account okay perfect now we have implemented withdraw method internally it will call account repository dot find by id method let us say if the account with a given id is not existing database then we will throw the runtime exception next we have added one more condition like if the withdraw amount is greater than the balance then we'll throw the runtime exception like insufficient amount next let us say the balance is greater than the withdraw amount then we'll write the logic like we'll withdraw some amount from the existing account balance and then we'll add that total to the account and then we'll save that account into a database and then we'll return the updated information okay the logic is pretty simple Next, let us build the withdraw REST API that will internally call this method. So go to account controller. So here, let me first write the comment withdraw REST API. So just type public and then response entity. And then pass account DTO. Let's give method name as withdraw and then pass two parameters first parameter as id second parameter as a map 
the key type is string the value type is double and let's call it as request perfect next let us get the amount from the request so here double and then amount equal to request dot get and then pass amount all right next account detail account detail equal to account service dot withdraw and then pass id and then amount next let us have a return statement return response entity dot ok and then pass account detail in a body perfect now we have created withdraw method it will internally call account service dot withdraw method and it will pass account id and the withdraw amount okay next let us make this method as a rest api by using spring annotations so here let us annotate this method with and put mapping annotation well this put mapping annotation will map incoming http put request to this method and then let us pass the id and then withdraw perfect next let us bind the value of this id to this method argument by using at path variable annotation next let us use one more annotation that is at request body annotation now we have built withdraw rest api next let us rerun our spring boot application and let us test this rest api so from here let us stop and run the spring boot application all right our spring boot application is up and running let's go to postman client over here and here let's create a new request so let me copy the request url from the existing rest api request so here let us select http put method and then pass request url localhost 8080 slash api slash accounts slash the account id and then withdraw all right so here we are going to basically withdraw some amount from the account with id 1 next let us go to body select raw choose content type json and here let us pass the withdraw amount let us say i want to withdraw 5000 next click on send button and there we go in a response you can see the account holder name and the balance earlier the balance was 25000 now you can see the balance 20000 because we have withdrawn you know the amount 5000 okay next let us say i want to withdraw five more thousand then what i can do is i can click on send button and you can see the response the balance is 15000 next let us say i want to withdraw 10000 then the balance should be a uh, 5000 right so let's click on send button and you can see the balance 5000 it means the withdrawal http is working as expected 